Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Lemon Ginger Snap Posset. That's right, you know a dessert is old when it appears in one of Shakespeare's plays. Although back then it was more of a sweet spice drink that was actually used in Macbeth to poison someone. But long story short, eventually it evolved to be an amazing chilled dessert. And nowadays people use Kel smoothies to disguise the taste of poison. But anyway, literary history aside, this may be the best dessert you've never heard of. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And first up, we're going to prep our serving glasses. And we'll do that by pouring some melted butter into any kind of cookie crumbs. Okay, literally any kind of crunchy cookie will work, as will graham crackers. And because I'm calling this a lemon ginger snap poussette, I made up a batch of our famous Food Wishes ginger snap cookies. And once we've mixed our melted butter with our crumbs to form kind of a damp, sandy looking mixture, we will transfer a couple tablespoons into the bottom of each glass, and then sort of tamp them down a little bit to compress. And I'm actually using a muddler from a cocktail set that I think I bought to make mojitos with, but never did. And then let me give you one big tip here. After those crumbs are pressed down, you really should refrigerate them to firm them up. Because if you don't, well, actually, you're going to see what happens. So stay tuned for that. And then once our glasses are prepped, we'll move on to the only other thing we want to get ready ahead of time. And that would be our lemon zest and freshly squeezed lemon juice. So I'm going to go ahead and zest a couple lemons. And as you all well know, we only want that yellow surface. Okay, so don't be great in the same spot two or three times. And we want to end up with at least one generous rounded tablespoonful. And then once those lemons have been de-zested, we'll go ahead and squeeze out the juice, enough to make exactly a quarter of a cup, which for me took exactly three halves. And once our serving cups have been prepped and we've zested and juiced our lemons, we can head to the stove to finish this recipe, which is ridiculously simple because all we need to do is pour a couple cups of heavy cream into a saucepan, or something with a nice thick heavy bottom preferably. And to that we'll add a little touch of white sugar, and we will set our heat to medium high, and we'll cook that stirring until our sugar dissolves and the mixture starts to boil. And once that happens, what we'll do is back the heat down to medium, and let this cook for exactly nine minutes. Oh, and do not under any circumstances walk away. All right, heavy cream likes nothing more than to boil over. And as soon as you walk away, it will sense it and do exactly that. So we're going to want to stay right at the stove, giving it a stir occasionally. And like I said, we'll let that bubble just like that for nine minutes. And I know I said medium heat, but you may have to adjust yours up or down to maintain what you're seeing in the pan. All right, that's just you cooking. So for you, that might be medium low or medium high. I don't know. But regardless, like I said, we'll let that boil for nine minutes, at which point we will turn off the heat and give it one last stir. And right here, you can see what I was talking about when I said it likes to boil over. So make sure you use a big enough pan. And then what we'll do at this point is pull that from the stove and proceed to whisk in our lemon zest and juice. And at this point, it really doesn't look like much. I mean, it's kind of thin and has a film of butterfat on the top. But you'll see as soon as you start to whisk, something magical happens. And the acid in our lemon juice combines with the fat in the cream. And the mixture is going to kind of thicken up and take on a much more attractive appearance. But anyway, we'll go ahead and whisk that all together. At which point we're going to let that rest for exactly 10 minutes before straining the mixture into a measuring cup. And while you can, of course, strain that in anything you want, this is going to make it a lot neater and easier to pour into our glasses. So we will go ahead and strain out the zest. And if everything's gone according to plan, we should end up with about two cups of mixture, which according to my calculations is going to give us four half cup servings, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it is. And then once that's been accomplished, we can go ahead and carefully pour that into our cups or glasses. And as I do, you're going to get a great look at why you want to refrigerate those crumbs first. All right, because I didn't and they were still loose, as you pour this in, you're going to have crumbs floating up. And they're going to wreck your perfect presentation. Which, if I'm being honest, really didn't bother me that much. Since most of them did settle. And the ones that didn't got the old polka polka with a knife. And you also may get a few rogue bubbles, which you can go ahead and pop and stir in. But anyway, I'm always trying to teach you the correct technique. And if you do refrigerate those glasses, you're not going to have that problem. And by the way, even though we're doing a very small portion because this stuff is rich, I don't want to use some small ramekin, as I think it's going to look much more dramatic in an oversized glass like this. Okay, with this approach, it's almost like we're doing an edible dessert terrarium. But regardless of what you use, once these are done, we're going to let them cool down to room temp, at which point we're going to cover them 
and refrigerate them for at least four hours or until completely cooled and set. All right, I think overnight is best, which is how long I refrigerated mine for. And then the next day I went ahead and pulled those out and decided to garnish with a little piping of whipped cream, as well as a little scattering of pomegranate. But of course, any kind of seasonal fruit will work here. So feel free to garnish with whatever you want. I mean, you are after all the Lady Macbeth of whether you do it like Chef. And that's it, I let the last of that condensation on the glass evaporate off so I could take a few pictures of what was basically as I described earlier, a lemon pudding terrarium. But eventually I grabbed a spoon so I could dig in. And despite this stuff having no gelatin or eggs or starch of any kind, we've achieved the most beautiful, luxurious, thick, velvety texture that you really must experience to believe. I mean, come on, we only did that with three ingredients. So this really is, texturally speaking, quite amazing. As is the taste as well. All right, because this doesn't have any starch or eggs, we really do get this beautiful, clean, pure citrus flavor. So I just absolutely love everything about this. And of course, a whole bunch of sweet, buttery, spicy ginger snap crumbs at the bottom is not going to hurt. And even though I did lemon here because I think it pairs best with the ginger snaps, this is also amazing done with lime or a combination of lemon and lime. So just a little something to keep in mind. But no matter what you end up using, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.